What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of The Locker Room. I'm here with Jaden Braley. What's going on, brother? Thanks for having me, mate. No, not much. No, it's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming on. Just said you had uh, lunch with the missus? Yeah, it just uh, works around the corner, so popped in, got a coffee, got a ham cheese toasty, and good to go. Just just cruising with... That's a uh, good good thing that she's so close, because obviously you can just like see her during the... Because like, the thing with rugby, and a lot of people, like league, a lot of people don't realise that, is that sometimes, especially in pre-season, like... By the time you get home, you're so wrecked. You actually don't get to spend much time with your partner or your missus or your family or whatever. And it's obviously a good thing that she lives close. Is she also from the Shire? Like, from the Shire? Yeah, Shire. So, I um, she grew up in um, Lilypilly. And that's so, just like so just you play for the, the Shire. So. You play for the Sharkies. <laughs> you grew yeah. up in the Sharkies and you chose a girl from the Sharks. Yeah, that's it. And was, she, was she a Sharkies fan before you met her? She had no idea about footy. Oh, really? Good. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what you want, yeah. bro. 100%. 100%. How's it been, man? How's the preseason? Obviously, yeah. we were talking earlier, it's been a... Off the field, it's been a bit of a roller coaster. Mm. But how's it been on the field when it comes to training in the preseason? Yeah. How are you feeling? You know, you're looking fit, and it's always. A, I reckon like after Christie is always good because you're like feeling the best you've ever felt, and you're not as niggly as you are say to like coming close into first trials. You're a bit sore because mm. they try to pump you just before you go out. Yeah. How are you feeling personally? Yeah, I feel good. Um, put on a little bit of weight over the preseason, but yep. you know, it's obviously this time of year is a bit better than the first couple of weeks. Yeah. Being back, but. Um, you know, it's been good so far. You know, a lot of stuff's been going on with coaches and all sorts of things at Sharks. But, you know, we've got a pretty good senior playing group and they've all just said, you know, it's out of our hands. So we're still training hard and, um, yeah, we'll be playing before we know it. And, and do you feel, I mean, you, you probably, you wouldn't have spoken about this as, as the Sharks, but you've had so much drama and you've seemed to be galvanised by, you know, going on to win the Premiership in 2016. Um does it kind of feel like the senior players are kind of like, boys, we've been through this before. Like, we've been here. We're good. 100%, yeah. Especially as probably as those who could go in 2014. Yep. And they've seen the worst the worst of it. So, you know, I guess anything that gets thrown at us is just like another obstacle. And yep. we've kind of learned how to respond to these sort of, sort of things. And, you know, it's just another another thing that's happened in the last few months. But, yep. um, you know, we're all moving forward. And we've got such a good side. So, yeah. The biggest thing that we've spoken about is um, we don't want to let this year get a waste, especially with the team that we have. Mm. So, um, yeah, we've just been all ripping in to training and working on those combos. And how long has Sean Johnson been training with, like how much have you trained with him specifically? He started like literally um, in January. So he didn't come in before Christmas because the Kiwis played over in England all those games. So, but he's been really good. He's a legend of a bloke, um, fitting in really nicely. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't wait to play with him to be honest. And what's something that you've initially noticed? You know, being a like hooker, your your service to him would be much different to say, you know, uh, Moylan or whoever mm. was at six or seven. Like if Chad's wh- yep. whatever you're going to play six or seven, um, you know, what's is there anything you noticed with him specifically as you're delivering the ball to him? Um, he's a pretty cool cat. Like he's yep. pretty like um, easy going bloke, but. Yep. Um, Chad's obviously a lot more about directing the team and yep. he's very steady and kicks well and directs the team around the park. Yep. But Sean just obviously adds that bit more flair yep. and you know, he can do anything with the football. So, you know, whenever he calls super or whenever he calls the footy, like I make sure I deliver it to him. Yep. And it's, uh, what's something do you think that you could, that you're looking forward to in playing with him? You know, obviously the, mm-hmm. the obvious stuff is like watching Sean Johnson do what Sean Johnson does. But as a you know a young hooker, you would have mm. seen uh, he would have been he's about twenty seven now. I think so, yeah, about that. So yeah. you would have been like twelve or so yeah. or thirteen. So you, he would have been one of the guys you're looking at. Going, oh man, I love Sean Johnson. Yeah, now I know. You're actually, spinning even the, the last year, or even now. Yeah, yeah. Like so, I mean, so, now you're spinning the ball. Too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Like I'm probably looking forward to sort of just pushing around him, like yep. passing the footy and not dying on the play. I yep. think because he can make something out of nothing, and mm. you know if he if I'm in the right spot at the right time, you know he could set me up with something. So. Um, you know, I'm sure it might take a couple of weeks, for not just me, but everyone to get used to. But yeah, um, that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, for myself, yeah. No, it's, um, uh, with with the signing of him, it's taking your side from a really good side, like you were already mm. a good side. But it takes it. Okay, wait a second. You got Townsend and Johnson, like as your halves. You got either Dugan or Moylan at the back. Yourself mm. had a few years in NRL now. Your forward pack's always been good, so it's it's a genuine. If you can get that roll on, who who knows what can happen? What's it been like under? Uh, it's John Morris, correct? Yep. Yeah, John, yeah. Morris. Uh, John Morris. John yeah. Morris, What's it been like under him? Just yeah, such business as usual? Yeah, business as usual, really. Yep. Um, obviously, different different character again to Flano and different yep. sort of um, systems. Um, so, there's obviously, a little bit of differences there. But 
I had him in under 20s and I've known uh, okay. him for a while now. Yep. And he was my 20s coach. Yep. And I got on with Bomber really well. Yep. Um, you know, it's, it's a real shame what's, what's happened to Shane. Yep. Um, it sucked. But, you know, I guess we've got to move forward, I yep. guess, with, with Bomber. And, um, you know, we've all got full faith in Bomber. And um, we're, all, we're all, as I said before, like we're all trying to get used to him and whatever he wants. So, yep. um, yeah, that's probably the biggest thing. But he's been going good so far. Yep. It's, uh, he, he, was, he played like, over 200 games, didn't he? Played 300, 300. on the dot. Yeah. On the dot. On the dot. Fuck, he scraped yeah. that in. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. Fuck, you <laughs> know. He wasn't playing busted, I think. Just there, but <laughs> he was like, probably strapped just to get it out on the field. <laughs> yeah, then, I know. Fucking hell. He had a bad on the neck dot. injury, actually. Hey? I think he had a bad neck injury that put him into retirement. Oh, really? But, um, I think it was something wrong with the discs or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think that was the reason why he ended up stopping, but yeah, he fuck. scraped it in. Yeah, he would have been like, good. mate, I've got to get a 300. He's got to get it. Oh, like, 100%. Can you imagine being put out at 299? <laughs> yeah, no. You would be filthy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, anyway, so take us back to a young Jaden. Uh, obviously, you grew up in the Shire, you were saying. Yep. You know, where, where'd you grow up? <laughs> what was it like growing up? Was it always footy or, or what was it like? Yeah, so I uh, grew up in Menai, which is in the Shire. Yeah. Uh, it's probably on the outskirts, but it's still in the Shire, I yep. like to say. Um, but yeah, always played football growing up. Uh, started when I was six years old. I yep. uh, got two brothers who also play football. Um, Blake's down at the Sharks full time, so it's me and him at Hooker at the moment. Okay, um, so he, is he, like, obviously there are other players that if they trial really well, but mm-hmm. at, at the moment, is he that next Hooker if you get injured or? Yes. Oh, wow. So, it's crazy. Yeah, it's two pretty crazy. Hookers. Yep. Um, but we're dead set, like, the two true hookers at, at in the NRL squad at the moment okay, so wow. we haven't even got like oh we've got a couple of utilities yep. but like, actual y- specialist you know what I mean yeah yep, yep, yep. Um, so he'll, that, I'll, I'm pretty confident he'll play this year he's, he's yep. a gun he's a really good player um, i got a little 14 year old brother Taj yep. also plays hooker no way <laughs> yeah what the um, I know and my dad uh, is a coach down at Sharks he okay. coaches the women's at the moment okay yep and he's so he's like growing up. I've always wanted to play in the NRL. Yeah. Um, I've always um, had fun playing football. Yeah. But for me, it's always been about you know making it to first grade oh, and, yeah, and okay. doing all that. Like yep. I've, I've always really wanted to play in the NRL. Yep. And um, you know, Dad's always worked hard with us and trained us growing up, and you know, taught me a lot growing up until I started you know making all the rep sides yep. and and whatever. But. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much it, to be honest. Like, we're a big footy family, to be yeah. honest. So, were Sharks always your team? Uh, no. Oh, so, shit. when I was real young, yeah. real, oh, really real, real young. Real I was two years old, I didn't even yeah. know how to walk yet. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I uh, used to follow the Roosters. The Roosters? I used to love Minicello. 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 The count. Yeah. Fuck, he was um, good. I think, and Flano was the assistant coach at that time. Oh, really? So, I've known yeah. Flano for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And I remember he used, to, he used to get me, like, signed hats and... Yeah, uh, he got me a signed blues jersey oh, one year when he was the assistant for the blues. Oh, right. Um, so I used to like froth it. And yeah, yeah, just 100%. love love it. I used to yeah get around it. So so the count. And what about like was Freddie Fittler or someone that you? Or yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Four. So how old you would have been in two thousand and four? He he came back out of retirement two thousand and four, mm-hmm. and then he retired. I think anyway. Yeah. So Freddie Fittler would have been a big Freddie Fittler. Yeah. Um, it was always that time when what game that sticks out in my mind was when Timmins kicked that field goal. To win uh, oh, that game, that, in the Origin game, forty meter field yeah, goal, or whatever. Yeah, that, that, oh, that always sticks out in my mind. What a G up. Yeah, absolute G- I'm, a Queens, I'm a Queenslander. Fucking <laughs> G up. He would miss that ninety nine times <laughs> out of hundred. Yeah. I actually had him on the show, and he was saying how uh, I think what gave him confidence. Phil Gould said to him, "I want you out there," and he got yeah. subbed on late. I could be wrong. I'm just like, but he yeah, it was something about Phil Gould giving him confidence in saying like, you know, you can do it or whatever. And mm. then he nails that frigging field goal, forty fifty out. I remember Crazy. losing my mind at that time. Hey. <laughs> I remember losing my mind yeah. at that oh, stage. <laughs> and then it was a fucking quite a long time between drinks. Yeah, um, okay, so so Roosters then. So when did yeah. you start liking the Sharks? Uh, probably once I started being looked at to come in the system. So okay. probably 12, 13. Yep. I really started following the Sharks and like just... Yeah, know, from there on th- out. Threw the Roosters out the window <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> brushed them. Yeah, brushed, brushed, them. brushed the Roosters. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, love the Sharks, love the club. Yeah. Um, wouldn't want to be anywhere else to be honest always want to play there and I yep. um, yeah, love all the fans and the, the members and the fans and um, yeah local so gotta love the Sharks oh mate it's I would like obviously it's probably not going to happen but I would hate to see it go anywhere else like the Sharks yeah. are synonymous with the Shire I would hate that that would, that would be mm. oh, I wouldn't like it um, so so your father was was he did he play footy not professionally but like he uh, played resis, yep. um, but he only started playing footy when he was 
16, I think. Yep. Um, my grandfather played for Balmain. Tigers. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, yeah. Played, played in Norwalk for uh, Tigers. Yep. Um, and he didn't actually want my dad to play football because he didn't want, didn't want the injuries yep. to come yep. along with it. I think he was yep. a bit worried, which was weird yep. uh, considering he played first grade. But um, but my dad just uh, loved the game and learned yep. so much about it. And he taught um, you know, me and my brothers heaps growing so, up and so he did so much with us training wise i was gonna say up. what's what's some like how early do you remember the the, the sessions where he was like boys yeah. you're not going on holidays you're going on train yeah or well i used to go i started doing weights probably end of year six Fuck, really where he started year seven and i used to get up um 5 30 in the morning to go to the gym with my dad with my old man yeah it was, it was full on but it was good like he wasn't like it wasn't, one of, it wasn't one of those psycho dads that like push you. You enjoyed do this. doing it. I enjoyed doing it. Yeah, and yeah. I love, and he knew that I'll, that's what I wanted. Yep. So he knew what and he needed to do. Yeah. Kind of thing. And I wasn't the biggest yep. bloke going, I was a little scrawny yep. kids growing up. So I kind of needed that. And then yep. um, used to like, go for runs, um, doing, I had to do a preseason training up, up at the local park, like just doing like passing training yeah, yeah. and tackling and all yeah. that. But still at such a young age. Yeah. Like, oh, right. Yeah. So, but like, yeah, like, we, like me and my brother loved it. Like yeah. We loved Do you remember any dummy that. spits as a youngster? Oh, a little bit. Me and Blake always give to each other. <laughs> yeah, we've had a few run-ins. Going up, not just footy-wise, but just yeah. around the house. Yeah, yeah. Um, but um, I remember once, I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I've got a... <laughs> so uh, I've got a nickname. People call me, down, especially the staff down at Sharks, they call me Cookie. Cookie? And I... I had a massive blue with my brother um, over a cookie once. I would have been about 15, 14 years old yeah, at the yeah, time. Yeah. But I like shotgunned this, this shotgun the last cookie. I loved it. <laughs> yeah, shotgun. I shotgunned it. Bro, the rules of shotgun yeah, are universal. Come back 10 minutes later and it was gone. Blake had it in his mouth. So I flogged him and then... <laughs> what, that's full on scrap? Yeah, and then he brought the training and it's still stuck today. So No, so he came and said, he freaking fought me over a cookie. Yeah. And, boys, and to this day, 100%. the staff still call you a cookie. Staff call me a cookie. Fucking so yeah, hell. Yeah. Over a cookie, bro. Do not mess with your food. <laughs> yeah, no. You're all bulking at that stage. Yeah, only bulking. He's hundred percent. It was a protein cookie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, that's funny. Um, so, at what point? So, you, you know, you're, you're in year six, going to the gym. But mm-hmm. at what point did you start going? Oh, I actually have some ability here. Like, I'm I'm going to continue training as hard as I can because I'm going to start being looked at for systems. Yep. Um, probably Matthews Cup. To yep. be honest, I, I didn't play. Uh, year young Matthews Cup. I played my proper and age. What, what age is that for the people listening? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. So, and a lot of like a lot of the better players play when they're fifteen. Yeah. But I, I was a little bit of a late bloomer, and yep. I didn't play till I was sixteen. Um, and I sort of just like tried to learn as much as I could growing up. Yeah. And I never made any rep sides growing up. Um, oh wow. No, never. Um, so I missed out on all origins, 16, 18s, 20s. No way, really. Kangaroos, 16, oh, whenever Kangaroos is. Yeah, yeah. Until I was in year 12, I played for Australian Schoolboys. Yep. So your Australian um, Schoolboys was the first, like year 12 Schoolboys was the first rep side you made? Yep. Fuck. Yep. That's so I didn't even make New South Wales. I made like, all the Sydney teams. Yep. But that was as far as, as, far as I, I ever yep. got. Yep. Um, and for people listening, like when you're, uh, as, as a sportsman, like the elite you make the Queensland side like the guys that make yeah. Queensland side usually go on to do something or, or New South Wales side usually like for example when I was growing up I made all the soccer Queensland sides from like grade 5 or whatever and all those boys that I played with ended up playing A League so yep. just an example yeah, yeah exactly so yeah um, it was pretty hard to take as a kid too like yeah. mum and dad were always like um, uh, you know don't worry about it but it's hard to, it was hard for me to take also, you know, yeah, you think all the boys out man. the car on the way home yeah. and and whatever, but um, yeah, like I, I still like loved it, loved playing football. But I still believe in myself that I could still yep. um, push forward with my game and everything. I just sort of used it to motivate me as well. Yeah, and I think it's kind of helped me in a way. Yeah, because sometimes some of the boys that kill it growing up, because mm. it's come so Not easy. Today. Yeah, they don't have that yeah. grit to get through those hard times. And I mean, there's there's guys that are so talented they still get through. Yeah, but the guys that aren't like freaks just just fall away. Just yeah, fall exactly. Away and you're like, man, what happened? Like, he was a gun when he was 16, and now he's doing 100%. nothing. Hundred yeah. percent. Um, so do you reckon it was it helped that your dad? kind of knew the system in a sense that he could say mate trust me don't worry about it like yes mm. it sucks you've made that but if you just keep working hard you're gonna yeah for it. sure because he's a straight shooter as well and if you yep. had a shit game you'd say oh, you know no, you're no good today yep. or whatever but like you say he wouldn't say that bluntly but he'd, he'd go you need to do this more need to do yep. this and I'd be out in the field um, growing up and um, 
I'd always hear a whistle and he used to always whistle out to me and I always used to look, look out to him on the sideline yeah. and he might go, use your shoulder, use your shoulder, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I'd yeah, go, all right, yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. So then I'd, you know, rip in a bit more and yep. like, like, and even today I always come off the field and I go, like, what'd you think? Yeah. How'd you think I went? Because I, I value his opinion as well. Yeah. Because I know he's got a good idea about the game yeah, and um, he gets it. he's a straight shooter, so. Yeah. As well as my coach, coaches and all that. But, yep. um, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy how important, like, you know, like the, you, you know, your father, can be in footy like can you imagine yeah. if he wasn't there like let's say he was a father that didn't enjoy footy mm. it's like fuck like would have you made it maybe like but yeah exactly you don't know, know. like don't whereas know. the ability to be able to look across and be like use your shoulder more yeah like it's such a it's crucial thing kind of thing yeah not so much anymore all yeah. the crowd's getting around <laughs> yeah. near him but hundred <laughs> percent <laughs> looking across looking at dad yeah. in the middle of the thing and just get absolutely jammed now it's just my coach spraying me out the time. Yeah. use your shoulder hundred uh, percent um okay so your first was uh, year twelve to make this all these schoolboys and yep. and I, I, was that a moment where you like it was a very proud moment for you because you're like I finally did it like yeah. made Aussie schoolboys yeah that was a massive moment for me yep. and I got lucky because uh, I toured France and England oh wow for that so um, uh, that only comes once every four years oh, yeah so I got hit the jackpot yeah <laughs> yep. and we had some really good plays in that in that side like uh, Latrell Mitchell played yep um, I think Tom Tom Trebovic made it but he was injured yep um, same with Robert Jennings had Brock Lamb all those young guys and, yep. um, so we had a really good team and like, that went a long way with my confidence as well I was like oh finally you know yep. I made it yep and then I progressed into 20s that's 18s Australian schoolboys yep then I progressed into 18s were you with the club yet or yeah I was with Sharks yeah okay, yeah all so, that time so 16s when you made the Harold Matt uh, for Sharks yep. yep and then I went to SG yep. Ball okay. which is 18s <clears throat> yep then I moved into twenties after Aussie schoolboys, and I missed out on the origin both years. Oh, really? Twenties origin? Yeah, and I was like, oh, "How's this work?" Yeah, yeah. I'm playing Aussie schoolboys. I can't make yeah, New South Wales. Yeah, yeah. And then I won the um, Player of the Year oh. at the Dally M's. Okay, for twenties. For twenties. Second year. Second well, in my proper year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you know, I couldn't make a rep team. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand it, but yeah, yeah. like, it didn't like. As I said, this motivated me, and yeah. it didn't phase me too much. Of course, it was. Disheartening, still but frustrating. You frustrating. player of the year yeah. in twenties, and you can't make the New South Wales side. Not even off the bench as like a yeah. you know rotate hooker or something. Yeah, like I'm happy with that. Eighth man. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, it was, it was alright. It was just yeah. like motivation, really. Yeah. And um, yeah, the, it doesn't really matter now. Once yeah. you make the NRL, all that all that doesn't that mean anything nothing. to yeah. be honest. Like, but still, as you said, like, did that give you a bit of not a chip on your shoulder, but like, you know what? Fuck yeah, you're not gonna select me, or I swear, I'll show you what what's gonna you know what you should have selected. I'll show you that you were wrong in not selecting me. Hundred percent, yeah, and it helped me with training and yeah, you know, just getting better, I guess. And so, the second year of twenties is that when you went into the first grade squad? Yeah, so I went out of twenties into NRL the year after because that yep. Mick Ennis retired um, at the end or when in sixteen, yeah, which is when I finished twenties. Okay, and I went into. So that so NRL. the Mickiness retires and then you go into the NRL first grade squad. Mm-hmm. And what was that when you get the call up for the first grade squad? Was that expected or a bit shocking still? Uh, it was a little bit of a shock because my first proper game was actually in the World Club Challenge. Yeah. In in England. Okay, so you hadn't so, made your NRL debut yet. No, I and hadn't. You'd been but you'd called been called into train with the first grade squad. Yeah, because I was full, I'd become full time. My contract took over yep. and I was yep. okay. a part of the top thirty or whatever. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, then I, I remember them calling me. Into Thano, or Thano called me into his office, and all the coaches were sitting there with Steve Price and yep. James Shepard at the time. Um, and yeah, they pretty much just told me, and I was, was losing my mind. Really. The World, just, Club, World Club Challenge? Yeah, they said, Oh, we're taking you over to England. Oh. Um, and Thano goes, I want you to um, just be good with your defense, with your defense, give good service, anything else is a bonus. Yeah. I'm like, Oh, fucking beautiful. Yeah, that's all I got to do. Yeah. So and then I'll start in the game, which was a bit more daunting as yep. well. Um, so, but yeah, it was just, that, that was an, an experience in itself. It was just full on. Yeah. That, the atmosphere there was just next level. You flew, so flying over, that's exciting as well. You're with yeah. the first grade squad flying over. The business class. The boys, <laughs> are, put, boys are putting shit on you constantly. But oh, that's all good. Mate, I still cop it today. <laughs> I mean, honestly, they, it's, you gotta have thick skin. Yeah. You gotta be able to back me out. Like, mate, you gotta have 100%. thick skin. Hey, you gotta be dead behind the eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm dead behind. I'm a broken soul from footy. Yeah, broken soul. Still got insecurities from ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what? So you go across and uh, you you. What was it like running on? Were you like because that's yeah. that first real experience of like you're around men, mm. 
you know, there's these NRL players. I'm mm. assuming Luke Lewis, Paul Gall, and they're all playing. Yep. And you're just like, I'm running out with these boys. Yeah. So especially after the year they had the year before, yep. I was yep. like, oh my god, I'm stepping into this. This is yep. just insane. And I remember walking out. Um, actually, I remember the bus. We had drums of the bus on the way there. Yeah. So we turned up really late because of the oh, wigging. really bad traffic. Yeah. Literally had half an hour to get ready. Yep. Like in the sheds. Yep. Strapped and everything. I remember walking out and just the Pommy career, I'd just absolutely given it to us. <laughs> like, it was just next level. The music was blaring and it was just, coming yeah. out of 20s, I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, and yeah. even today, it's probably the biggest crowd, um, wow. like the most vocal crowd I've ever experienced. Wow, that's crazy. And um, I remember we lost that game <laughs> and I remember they scored on the buzzer and I come back on to finish the game. I stand behind that try line yeah. and all the Wigan crowd were behind us and they were just absolutely spraying us. You know they are with their... Uh, Bark Barmy Army and Oh all yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your oh, shit. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, it was like intense, and I was like, oh, my God, so they were off chanting, this field. chanting songs of how she like. Yeah, did. yeah. So oh, it was like <laughs> yeah, crazy. And it's it just crazy. rubbing it in, like you've just been beaten on the buzzer. You're yeah. already devastated. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Okay, sweet. So you you play that game. How'd you play it? How do you think you went? Yeah, I, I did. I played pretty well. Like yep. I didn't. Um, I didn't make any line breaks or anything like that, yeah, yeah. as I expected, but. Um, you know, good service, good good defense. I didn't get miss miss too many tackles. Like yep. I was pretty pretty solid defensively. So, and that's what they wanted from me. Yep. So I was um, I calmed the nerves for my you know proper NRL debut. Yeah, I was gonna say in so, round one. So yeah, you made so you made your debut in round one. Yeah. Okay. Against uh, the Broncos. Around the Broncos. Up yeah. Shark Court? No, Shark Park. Shark Park. Shark Park. Okay. 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 Fair enough. And what was that? So that's 2017. 2017, yeah. 2017. So what was that like? You, you, so you would have been playing against 2017. So Corey Play, Parker would have still been No, around? not Corey Parker, no. No. It's probably a similar team to now. Like, um, yeah, because that's what, it's not, not last season, but the season before. Adam Blair was there. Uh, okay, yep, yep. Corbin uh, Simpson, like I said. Okay. Yeah. So, what was, so how did you find out? You made, did you, so going to World Club Challenge, were you kind of like, okay, I'm probably going to make my debut then or still a shot? I was a little bit more confident, but yep. I didn't, still didn't class that as like an NRL debut. Yeah. And um, we actually had a trial against Broncos a couple of weeks before that. And yep. we had Broncos round one. So yep. that actually helped calm the, ner- the nerves a bit because yep. I'd tackled most of those blokes yep. um, in the trial. But um, yeah, I was just as nervous to be honest. Yep. But it was a bit more calming to be at Shark Park with all my family there. Did you just get named um, in the side or did they call you in the office and say you'll be making No, they didn't. So they just named, named me in the side. Oh, really? Yeah. Wow. So and then like they do like the ritual at yep. Sharks where yeah. Yep. Got to dance in the middle or whatever for you to do. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, to, okay wait a sec. Yeah. So you, tell us about the ritual at the Sharks. So, um, <laughs> yeah, you got to do like a dance and you got to answer a couple of questions they, they, uh, they throw at you. <laughs> yeah. uh, like junior club, what it means to play at the Sharks. Yeah. And they get you to do a dance. Okay, so, so. everyone, so everyone's in a circle. It's probably at the captain's run? Yeah, captain's run. Before, captain's run. Yeah. Everyone gets in a circle. You yeah. stand in the middle. You stand in the middle. They ask the questions. They ask a question. Any question? Any question? Yeah. And and they, they there's a couple regulars they yeah. ask. And then they'll throw in some weird ones. Yeah, yeah, they'll throw in some weird ones. Can you say what the weird ones were for no. you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. And then I can tell you a dodge that you didn't want to say. <laughs> and then the dance. Is it dance to music or just No, dance? so just clap like clap, clap like that. It's hard, hard as it is. And I can't dance at the best of times. So <laughs> What was your dance? Oh, I can't even remember at the time. Like, were I think just, I might have done like the worm or something. Were you just like so embarrassed? Yeah. Like, I'm fucking yeah. so embarrassed right yeah. now. Yeah, <laughs> I was so, so embarrassed. But um, yeah, like that, that was a good moment as well. To, um, like when all the boys are laughing, you know, it gets you yeah, yeah. amongst everyone. And yeah. like, I love, I love all that shit. Like, and, yeah, 100%. And also like, together. the thing is, is like, if you have a crack and look like a fuckhead, it's yeah. better then not having a crack yeah. and not making a fool of yourself. Yeah. Like, you just got to commit. 100%. Because yeah. if you don't commit, the boys will just be like, oh, man. Can't be half half. Yeah, like, you got to go yeah. in and do it. Yeah. That's funny. All right, so, yeah, you do your dance, run yeah. out in front of um, yeah. in front of your family and everything. What's something you remember from the debut game? Uh, biggest thing I remember was kicking off and just shitting myself. Yeah. Um, just being so nervous. Yeah. Um, just pumped up, adrenaline was going, the fireworks was going off, you know what it's like. And yeah. kicked off. And it was a really good kickoff, and Adam Blair is cutting it up, and we just what we call is like a bum rush. Yep. So it's when someone holds him up and drives him back. Yeah. And I was a part of that tackle, and we drove him back in the end goal. Oh, off wow. kickoff. Round first, one, round, first kickoff, yeah. So they dropped down. I was like, oh, how good's this? Yeah. Like NRL's easy. <laughs> it was <is> easy. Not, <laughs> so like that. That was probably the biggest thing that stuck yep. in my mind, and I remember stressing it about. And the crowd would have just gone. Yeah. Oh yeah. Especially yeah. after 16 as well. Everyone yeah. was amped up. Yeah. 
Um, I remember worrying about Milford a fair bit in his yeah. right foot. Oh, really? So yeah. you, that's something you were constantly thinking about? Yeah. Like, just don't step me. Just yeah, don't step me. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I yeah. just didn't want to let anyone down. Yeah. That was the biggest thing. I didn't want to let anyone down. And um, you know, I just didn't want to miss any tackles or yep. do something in the game where which would be a you know, really decisive bad play. Yeah. Um, and that, that whole year was about learning and um, finding my way and finding my you know, my place in the team and because yep. we've got a lot of strike weapons. So yeah, I do. Yeah, so I was just trying to feed them the footy and yeah. Debut, done yeah. and done. Did you get the win? No, didn't Lost? get the win. No, what was the score? Just, oh, I can't even remember to be honest. I can't even it was, remember. It was like, I think it was like there was no more than eight points. Eight, I think it was eight points. Eight points in it? In it, yeah. Okay. They lose by. So you walk, what's uh, obviously a bit of pill because you lose, but mm. you, you make your debut, what, you know, you walk off, speak to the family, speak to yeah. how, how happy was your dad? Was yeah, he was stoked, mate? yeah, and mum as well. Yeah. Got photos of them both, yeah. and you know, mum was upset, and, you know, mum's alike, <laughs> yeah. and, and all that, but yeah. um, Nan and Pop were there, and all my all my mates, I'm asking for a thousand tickets. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's it's the best feeling. It's like oh, something, 100%. as I said before, like yep. something you work for your whole life, and yeah, it's such a good moment. Yeah, hundred percent. And so the the next, so you make your debut, but I'm assuming now you're like, I can't not play NRL. Like I yeah. don't want to go back to reserve grade. Like, oh nah. Even 100%. though you're used to playing reserve grade yeah. or twenties before that, yeah. Now all of a sudden it's like I don't want to go back. Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, that's. Um, so I, yeah, I even skipped. I didn't play any reserve. reserve grade, I played yeah. twenties straight in. <laughs> yep. But um, yeah, no, nah, no way. No, nah, yep. I don't, don't want to lose that sport. No way. And so yeah, so you make your debut, and then did you play every game until round sixteen? Yes. And so yep. round sixteen happens. Uh, you broken jaw. Mm-hmm. You try to ta- tackle Dylan Walker. Mm-hmm. Now I haven't released it yet because everything yep. that's happening with Dylan Walker. Yeah. But he actually said the one thing he regrets on the field mm. is w- spraying you. Yeah. After he said, it's the only thing I regret. Like, I wish I yeah. never did that. I had no idea that that had happened to him. Yeah. But for you personally, how, to walk us through the tackle. How, how did it happen? What, how did it feel? What was yeah. going on? Do you remember it at all? Or? Yeah, I remember everything. Yeah. Um, it's no head knock, but yeah. I remember getting up off my line and, and Dylan Walker's a strong bastard. Like, yeah. I remember him hitting in, like, in behind the ruck. No, yeah. that was where I was. Yeah. And I've hit him. I've hit him well. And um, I didn't hear a crack. No pain. But I remember hitting the tackle and going, this is my jaw drop. And I couldn't feel my tongue. I oh. thought I might have cut my tongue off or something. Oh, That's really? what it felt like. Oh. It felt like I cut my tongue off. And I finished. I made, I made the tackle. And if you watch the video, like you can see my jaws hanging out. Yep. And there's actually a, a bad photo that shows it. Yep. And I remember getting to the ground. It's like, oh, something's not righty. Got the marker. And I'm running off. And obviously blood's spurting out. And the trainer runs out and he goes, oh, um, like head knock, HIA, yeah. shot down to one knee. And um, yeah, I remember running off and then I remember hearing what, <laughs> what he had to say and going off and blood spurting everywhere yeah. Yeah. and whatever. But um, yeah, I was a little bit disappointed by that, Yeah, if I'm being honest. I yeah. was a little bit disappointed, but I know what it's like on the footy field. Everyone's at each other and yeah, he, yeah. he wouldn't have known that I broke my jaw. Yeah, and yeah. I understand that. But um, at the same time, you're going to be like, man, yeah. like, I'm fucking cut. My jaw is Yeah, I know. Like, my jaw was hanging out yeah, and yeah. I was walking off the field injured. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, I, and, 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 like, I, was, I thought he might have said something to me. He might have sent me, flicked me a text or something. But yep. but that's all right. I, I don't, really don't care about yeah. it anymore. Like if I saw him now on the footy field, I'm, I would not go out there. And yeah. try and hear him. I'd shake his hand after the game. Yeah, it's all behind me. I don't care because yeah. I know what it's. You know, we both know what it's like on the footy field. Sometimes it just gets crazy. Yeah, like, obviously some people are worse than others when it comes to chatting, but sometimes it just gets crazy, man. Yeah, like, sometimes you, yeah, it just gets crazy. Yeah, exactly. Like, just, but yeah, I, I yeah, can't blame him. Like, I don't I really don't care. I was a bit. I was pissed off at the time. Yeah, hundred percent. As I you would be. Couldn't care less. Yeah, now yeah, it doesn't matter. bother me, and we've got nothing against him at yeah. all. But um, yeah, it was a pretty bad break. Yeah. Um, so you get it. you get in the changing rooms. Yep. And we just like on. Oh, we you, you know how you get like sometimes when you get really bad injured, you be I, I get scared. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. please don't like be something crazy. Like, exactly. I, that's what I was most upset about because yeah. um, I cleared the tongue. It still wasn't that sore. Yeah. There was just heaps of blood and clots coming out. Yeah. And the whole time I was just saying like, oh, how long? How long will I be out for? Yeah. That was all I'd say the whole time. Yeah. Because I actually didn't know how bad a jaw would be. Like you can understand an ankle. Like yeah. Six weeks, six, ten, ten weeks, whatever. Mm. But I had no idea about a jaw. Yeah. And um, the doctor said, "Oh, don't worry, we'll sort out later." I remember getting in the ambulance, um, and that was it. Was a uh, Sunday game. 
I didn't get off parade on until Wednesday. Oh, wow. So, so for three days there, there, three days, yeah. Three days, I was walking around the house and I tried to speak a couple of times and I just hear, hear it like grinding. Oh, like, but like, I literally, there was not much movement at all. Like, yeah. I couldn't talk too much at all. Yeah. Mum was upset. Um, as she would be and that, that was a big thing that stood out in my mind I remember seeing her upset every day and I was like oh, it's alright it's not yeah. that bad like, yeah. I'm not in pain Yeah, like uh, I'm all good, good. but um, yeah in hospital I remember the, the, them all being there Yeah, because um, I went to Cogra so so straight um, after the thing you went to Cogra straight after yeah in an ambulance and so this is and uh, I've like put something up about it before but this is, mm, so this is when yeah, McGinnis so, yeah. um, so you're lying in hospital rattled mm. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking at this stage? You going, oh my god, like shit, I'm in hospital. Yeah, my phone was going off ballistic. Yeah. Um, I was in hospital. I was upset. Um, all, all I was worried about was how long I'd be out for. Not yeah. not so much the pain, but I was just like, oh fuck, how long am I going to be out for? Yeah, yeah. I finally got into first grade. I've cemented, cemented a spot. Yeah. I don't want to lose it. Yeah. And that and, was the biggest thing. And, and just for context for people listening, like you, people listening, you may watch first grade and you may see someone like yourself play 16 games mm. and you assume that you think that you're a first time like you're full, like of course you'll come back and play first grade yeah. but that's not the environment no. it's like if I miss two games and someone comes and plays good my dream mm. is over that's what you're thinking in your head 100% so yeah sorry can be, can be pretty cutthroat especially yep. I was like still unproven at the yep. time what people some people might say yep. um, when I played 16 games I was still a young bloke yep. in his rookie year 100% but I remember um, lying in that bed mum, dad two brothers were around me just kept me company and then ne- next minute, McInnes walks in and he's in a full suit. And I'm just like, oh shit, how good is this? I was, I was a bit stunned because I couldn't talk. Yeah. Couldn't talk. And I was sitting there just stunned. And um, I was upset. I, when he was talking to me, I was still a bit upset. Yeah. Whatever. And um, yeah, I remember him saying to me, oh, don't don't worry about it. You know, you'll be you'll be fine. Yeah. Um, the spot's yours. You've, you know, you've had a great start to, the, to your career. Um, don't let it phase you. And obviously, he's done a lot of work in the yep. footy wise, but for him to come and do that, like I was just like oh, massive geez. weight off his shoulder. Yeah, and I was just like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. like cause I <laughs> couldn't, couldn't talk. Yeah, but um, there, yeah, that that was like I've always thought he was a good bloke and mm. appreciative of everything he's done for me. But that's probably the biggest thing that's yeah um, st- uh, stuck by me for sure. And just that that ability for a veteran to come to you mm. and say like, just focus on training hard again rehabbing correctly you'll get your spot back it yeah. takes so much stress out of the yeah. you know just yeah, words it did. Yeah. and you can go and just really focus instead of being like constantly anxious like oh my god mm. have I lost my spot have I lost my spot and he would have been commentating that day too yeah so it's, it was a big effort for him to come and do that so and he's commentating just came straight to the hospital, hospital. pretty much wow I'm not yeah. sure where he was yeah. but yeah that's he's, pretty he's impressive suit, eh? so. yeah I, I, I try to tell people like because he was at the Broncos and I was at the Broncos yep. and I just say all the time about Mick Innes and I like yeah, did you get on with him? him hey did you get on with him yeah like yeah, 100% like let's, we weren't it's not like we were like best mates in the sense like yeah. we went and had coffees together but he was always really nice to me and I try to tell people all the time like mate he's a genuine mm. old fashioned principles morals ethics yeah. You wouldn't expect it because he's an absolute menace on the field, but I promise yeah. you. And as I said, like it's not like I was best mates with him because I we just I was young and we just he hung out with Corey Parker heaps and whatever. Yeah. Um, but again, he was just like this old fashioned morals, ethics, everything like that. So I try to tell people all the time, like don't ever judge a guy by the way he plays 100%. on the field. Yeah. But even on the field, like he does some like grubby stuff, but not like crazy grubby. Like mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, it's not like he's fucking like yeah, like attempting to spear tackle everything nah. you know what I mean like he's not he's he's, nah. he's just pushing the boundaries kind of like, hey? yeah, just like a link like yeah a little niggler 100% yeah. Um, so Which yeah so you, you get out of the thing and then what was the rehab like was that was this your first real injury that you'd had where it's first yeah so I've been pretty lucky I've actually yep. touched wood I had, had, uh, that's real wood too <laughs> <laughs> oh lucky I've had uh, no no proper no real bad injuries yep. and that's probably the worst one um, yep. I had surgery on my ear last year so yep. I had real bad cauliflower. Yeah. Um, oh, the boys would have fucking yeah, died. Yeah, I know. I know. Oh, I know. Well, only 22. Imagine me in 10 years' time. <laughs> Maybe that ugly. Um, but uh, <laughs> uh, that I'm was sure my first proper injury. That, yeah. I rehab. So I actually hadn't eaten my first steak until uh, the week I returned to play. So oh, yeah. for the first three weeks, it was a full liquid diet. Liquid diet? Was liquid that diet? torture? Torture. Torture. And liquid. Then Just... I went soft. The, my favorite dish, the, so I could have like scrambled eggs. Yeah. But like when I say scrambled eggs, like I was eating it like a bird, like yep. I'd have to almost like danger swig it down. I had to get my missus to vomit it every <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> And um, 
Uh, but my favourite dish was I like a uh, mash. Yep. I had a mash and it was like really watered down. And um, then mum would cook like poached chicken. Yep. Put it in a blender. Oh, blend it. Yuck. Come out like powder. Yuck. Put it on top of the mash. All right. Then I'd put um, a bit of avo, like it's like a bit more like guacamole. Yep. Uh, a bit of sour cream, salsa. I'd mix it all in. That, that was probably the best dish that I could oh, have. Oh, the best dish. Yeah. Um, but like a lot of a lot of smoothies, like heaps of smoothies and... Um, I could I could only just for destroying for the first um, first week or two. Oh really? Yeah, it was. Fuck yeah, it was pretty. Yeah. It's pretty full on. Like. It's, what's crazy is like you can take the rehab, you can take getting absolutely pumped at training, but mm. it is torture. Yeah. drinking out of a straw. For, oh, you know what I mean? Like that's oh. the worst thing about it. So bad. Um. So so how many weeks did it take to get back to playing first grade? Six weeks. Six weeks. Fuck, yeah. that's quick. And I only lost two kilos. Wow. In that time, which was lucky. So I was on, I was working really hard with the nutritionist. Yep. And like I was sending her photos of every meal. Was that Mel? No. No. Her name's okay. uh, Jess Spenlove. Okay. Right. She does speak with the AFL teams too. Oh, okay. Because Mel used to be with Drew. And Drew, it was Drew the... the, tra- the Andrew Gray? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's there. He's yeah, still so, there now? Yeah, he's still okay, there. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's fucking good, eh? Yeah, he's unreal. Fucking knows so, so much shit about so much shit. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so six weeks. What, but wouldn't it have been like a 10... What, did they say to you 10 weeks? Uh, yeah, say? I think they, they said at least six weeks. So okay. it probably would have been about eight to ten. Okay. But you know what doctors are like? And yeah, they surgeons. always say the... Yeah, like worst case scenario. But yeah, they have he to said, Yeah. But he said once you break it with this surgery, it'll actually be stronger okay. than it was before. Oh, wow. So the plates are still in there. Yep. They'll always be in there. Okay. Um, and I haven't had any dramas with it. I've got a little bit of nerve damage now. As I said to you before, like I, <laughs> I might be eating, uh, eating some food. I have a bit of food dribbling down there. I wouldn't have a clue. That's and crazy. People always chip me about it, like, oh, <laughs> saving that for later. But I generally can't feel it. Yeah. And Mate, I've literally had a broken <laughs> yeah. and I can't feel it at yeah. all. And it's a real insecurity, and yeah. it just made me feel bad about myself. <laughs> yeah. And everyone's like, oh, oh yeah, sorry, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, I bet you most of the boys go, oh, fuck off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, 100%. Oh, fucking grow up. Oh, it's some concrete. Um, and so, okay, so that year rolls around, and I guess that year's a basically. Um, what the field uh, two months so you come back round 24 and did you guys make the finals that year yeah we got knocked out by the Cowboys and they did that run we were on that run and, to the that run to, and so oh okay so yeah you you, you and, and didn't they, they beat you by quite a bit didn't they or was that the year before uh, no that was in Golden Point no that was the year before no yeah. one you're thinking okay, of okay yeah okay. that was 2015 okay yeah uh, this one they went to Golden Point and yep. I think we missed the field goal but then Michael Morgan kicked it. Okay, sweet. And so, point. so that gear's done and dusted. How are you feeling? Um, you know, like you, you made your way back into the side. And you, how many matches did you play back? After the draw that year or this After year? After you broke your jaw, yeah. I played five. Five matches. I'm pretty sure. Six, seven, no, no, I didn't. No, I played three. Three. I'm pretty sure, yeah. Because 25, no, four, sorry. I played 25, 26. And then... Oh, three, sorry, the final. Yeah, three, three, and then the final got knocked out. Yeah. So did you feel like, okay, I'm not confident, but I'm, I'm yeah. back kind of thing? A little bit. Like, I was a bit like, oh, I just want to get that first tackle done. Yeah. But then I, I scored a try in the first four minutes. No way. Fuck <laughs> Luke Lewis set me up. I was like, oh, you're kidding. Like, yeah, how good is this? Put me out. Yeah. Like, so that calmed me again. Yeah. I've been pretty lucky. Yeah. Um, and I was in the right place, right time. But, um, yeah, like... I was obviously like pretty rattled and pretty, real nervous yeah. coming back. Um, it was like my, my debut all over again. Oh, really? Is that what it felt like? A little bit. Not as bad, but yeah. um, just because I'd been out for six weeks and yeah. wasn't too sure I'd go, even match fitness-wise. So did they put you um, straight back into the side? Yeah, straight back Run in. Run on? Straight back in, there. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty crazy. Straight back in, yeah. Did, you, did, did that give you... Were you like, wow, like, Flano mm. really backs me here. Like, 100%. Is, I've got a lot of confidence from him. Yeah, and I was... Um, yeah, I got massive confident, confidence out of it. Yep. I thought he might have brought me off the bench to start things off, but it just goes to show, you know, he backed me and, and believed in my yep. ability a fair bit to yep. chuck a 21-year-old show back out there after 100%. a broken jaw. In so such an important position in the middle. as well. Yeah. yeah. Like, not just on the sting, you know, usually that can happen, but mm. right in the middle, usually that ease you back into it. Yeah. Um, okay, so that year ends, and did you extend that year or the next year? Uh, extended, yeah, it would have been last year. Last yeah, year? Uh, when I, before I come back from my jaw. So, oh, really? As I broke my jaw, like after uh, just over a month, I'm pretty sure I re-signed. So had you already been negotiating before you broke your jaw? A little bit, yeah. A yeah. little bit, but I was kind of like, oh, 
I'll just offset it just on start playing footy again. Yep. I just don't want to think about it. Yep. Um, but, of course, I wasn't, like, talking to any other clubs. Or anything. Yeah, I okay. I want to stay at Cronulla. Yep. Okay, so 2018 rolls around. <clears throat> what was that like? You know, you, you've got a full season under your belt. You obviously missed six weeks, mm. but basically, a full, like, six weeks in a season is not too bad for mm. a footy player. Like, yep. Over a year, most players miss at least two or three games. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, some players miss 10, Here and there. 10 weeks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you, you, the next year rolls around, are you feeling much more confident, solid in your role, everything like that? Yeah, he's more confident. Um, yeah. Uh, probably just over time like it happens over time like you just get more confident even now yep. look back to last year and I'm so much more confident here yep. now and um, but yeah I was a lot more confident a bit of a different sort of roster with Moise coming and yep. and all that but as I said you know, we had still had a great team going and we had a great year last year so yep. heaps of confidence still and probably I wanted to chance my hand a little bit more last year and take okay. more risks yep. now that I'd had a full season under my belt um, but I think me and Chico our balance uh, really w- w- like worked really well yep. for the team, and I think we we got a fair bit out of it last year. Yeah. Okay. So and so, what do you think? Um, what if la- if 2017 was a learning year? What do you think 18 was for you? Uh, probably yeah. As I said, just taking a little bit more risk. Yep. I'm still learning because I'm still. I mean, like as you said, like a pretty important position yep. being a hooker. So, and it's hard when everyone's calling for the footy, yeah. especially with the sort of players that are around me. Yeah. What's that? T- explain what that's like for you. Like we. Yeah. You know, you've got Townsend demanding the ball. You've got mm. Gallon wants to take a hit up off the other side. You know, you've got Matty yeah, Moylan. Fafita. You've got Fafita Mark. wants the ball. Val. you got, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, Val's it's crazy. Trump, like all of these like superstars. Yeah. And you're just like, and you're actually the, the linchpin because you've got to make that right choice. Mm. What's that like? It's bloody difficult. <laughs> it's hard. Especially we have a, like a overriding call. Yeah. So someone calls super, they've got to get the footy. Yeah. I mean, something's on. Yeah. Sometimes I'd hear it both sides of the rack. Oh, I'm shit. just like, ah. Oh. Yeah. What do I want me to do here? <laughs> so I just, I just, and I've, um, uh, I haven't done it yet. It's occasionally, but I've, I'm really trying to uh, master it. Just, just looking up and counting numbers. Yeah. It's the best, best thing you can do, to be honest. And yeah. It comes, like, I've got to know my game plan. So, you know, I've got to direct the team almost, or if not just as much as Chad. Yeah. Um, so it can be difficult at times, but i just got to back myself and, yep. you know, of course, being a hooker, you know, we get sprayed sometimes by our own players, but it's just the way it is. It's yep. part of the position. Yep. Can't take it personally. Yep. Um, and, like, yeah, you just got to do your best, to be you don't, honest. You don't have to say who it is, but who, uh, what's the funniest spray you've got where you've, like... Funniest spray? Yeah, like, where the boys have just been, like, just fucking into you. Oh, Moise gives to me a fair bit. <laughs> like, he's, he calls me fucking... <laughs> and, um, a, gal, a gal always calls the footy, but he's, he's not too bad. For feeders, when I miss feeder, for feeder on a lead, like he'd run, he'd run a lead, and I might go out the back and he'd go, oh, I'm fucking through, I'm fucking through. And I'm like, he just slid off ya. I said, he might have tackled ya, he just slid off ya. But I didn't hit him a bit more, I yeah, think. He's, yeah. No, you can't stop him at the best of times. Oh, so man, 100%. Hopefully this year. Hopefully this year well, yeah. as, as a hooker, you're going to get sprayed because like yeah. everyone, you're all high-end athletes, everyone thinks that they're going to be, that you need that. Otherwise, yeah. if everyone doesn't think that they can break a game, like what are you doing? Yeah, like, 100%. Uh, that's funny. Um, yeah. Okay, so what's the most memorable part of 2018 for you? Ah, uh, this final series, yep. for sure. Oh, that, I think... Because you guys got to semis, did you? Prelim. Prelim. So got knocked out by yep. Melbourne. Um, oh, I think I've played or just under 50 yep. games now. I think I've played about 45. And you have I played 46 games. 46? Yeah. So I think the, uh, those three finals games that I played this year, yep. I reckon I've taken more out of that oh, than wow. I have in the other 43 or whatever it is. Wow. I reckon it's, it's done so much for me. I, I, just confidence-wise as well. Yeah. Um, when you play a finals game, especially um, I think when we versus the Roosters, I really hit home how big that game was. Yeah. And you look, you tend to look at other games, like regular season games, and you go, yes, that's – yes, and a normal NRL game is massive and it's yep. big stakes, whatever. Yeah. But compared to a finals game, like that's just next level. Yep. And I think going forward, um, I'll be able, I'll be more confident in taking risks yep. in a normal NRL game because yep. it's not as bad to make a mistake there than it is in a finals game. Yeah. Okay. I know you got to get there, but yeah, it's just it was just my perception after that final yep. series, just the amount of things I got out of it. Like it was just such a a confidence uh, to be like, look, I, I was able to act play this way in a much harder situation. Yeah. So yeah. if it's not as intense, I should be able to play just as well, if not better. By you know doing things that I want to do in an in an NRL game, hundred percent. Yeah, and it's obviously a lot tougher in a finals game. Everyone's 
the defense is a lot tighter. There's not as many opportunities. Yeah. So moving forward, there might be, you know, t- uh, twice as more chances in a normal game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's that's true. Eh? And especially like imagine Origin even crazier than that. Like, yeah. Oh, the Origin would be. Um, so <laughs> Never ends. so what's what's like the goal for you personally? You know, you're 22 years old now. Yep. Um, yeah. What's the goal personally for you? Uh, personally, for this year. Yeah, for the next 12 months. The next 12 months. Um, obviously, want to uh, prove myself as a 80 minute hooker yep I think it's pretty important with the interchanges these days and yep. all the best hookers are playing 80 minutes so I think that that goes a long way but um, you know, it's it's hard when my little brother's second hooker as well because <laughs> yep. I want to play with him yeah so you know if if, if, it, if I'm not playing 80 minutes and he's there like so oh, what doesn't it's not the end of the world but yeah um, I really want to play for the blues one day I'm yep. not sure if it'll be in the next 12 months but and especially the way uh, Cook's going at the moment yeah it's the other tough. cookie, the hey, other, cookie. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's fucking two cookies. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's going to be real, like real hard to crack into that, obviously. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm only 22 years old, so I have got plenty yep. of time up my sleeve. Um, but I can still at least show that I'm ready for that. Yeah. Okay. You know? and, and I be ready for the opportunity when yeah, it comes. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And um, uh, just building on my game, both attack and defence. You know, yep. that, that's the biggest thing. But. Um, yeah, I wouldn't mind getting a couple more cracks at 80 minutes this year for sure. Okay. And what's, um, has, who's been the, like, has Mickey Ennis been the biggest influence on your career, like, outside of your family and your father and yep. that? Has he been the biggest influence or who's been the biggest influence? Yeah, probably him and Flano, to be honest. Yep. Um, obviously, Mick, per, like, one on one. Yeah. He's done so much for me. And, like, like, I can call him after a game and say, what'd you think? Like, I'll, if I was a bit unsure how I went. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't get, you know, a lot of feedback from a week to week basis. So yep. sometimes I might call him and say, you know, what do you think I should do here? Or he'd go through a lot of video and, and pick apart the opposition defense for that week and, yep. and we'd work on it at training. Um, but with Flano as well, like he's, as I, as we spoke about before, like he, he's backed me to, you know, uh, give me my, no older boo. And, yep. um, yeah, that goes a long way with me. And I, like, I appreciate that so much. Um, but he taught me a lot as well. Just, as to like what it takes to be an NRL player and because yep. he's obviously been around for a while yep. and like he's even worked with Cam Smith um, who I look up to yep. um, you know some some great hookers so um, so is Cam Smith someone that you um, I guess Cam Smith and McGinnis would be the two hookers yeah. you really look up to yeah yep okay. um, those two are the main ones yep. and that's why when I get to verse Storm like it's such a big deal like I love it like, oh I really so in the him. yeah in the finals did you see oh, he would have been opposite yeah yeah he was opposite oh, yeah, that exactly like, uh, as a young kid that you know yeah, was on him. crazy like yeah. I remember laughing about it to my family at, at home coming home and saying oh fuck you know a couple of years ago I'd be watching TV watching the footy but yeah and I'm coming up against Cam Smith to make it get into a grand final yeah like it's pretty surreal 100% um, when you sit back and look at it but yeah you can't play like that you yeah, gotta, no, no. You gotta, you gotta still give it to like him and everyone yeah give it to yeah him. So yeah. just tr- 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 <laughs> <laughs> take um, him out. <laughs> what's the um, what's the best piece of advice that really like? What, what did you learn from Mick Ennis? Do you reckon the most out of all the teaching that he's mm-hmm. done for you personally? Um, he used to always uh, tell me just to back myself more than anything, um, uh, and he used to always say like, you know, you're here for a reason, um, and like pretty much yeah, just to back myself because like, like, you can't gave you, that confidence you can't be half half because that's when yep. you get your pants pulled down and <laughs> yep. um, and the team needs me to be at my best I, mean, yep. I can't just shovel the ball off the, off the deck all game and if I see something I've got to take it and yep. that was probably the biggest thing um, and you know when he gives me raps I, I get heaps of confidence out of that because I'm like yep. he's been there he's done it all yep. you know if he thinks I'm going alright then yeah, you know, I, th- I think it's that's a pretty pretty big deal. Hundred percent, hundred percent. What's the uh, what's the funniest memory that you've had on the footy field? On the footy field? Yeah, or even in the changing rooms. Tough, tough one. Um, or or just oh, a, yeah, a bizarre yeah, okay, moment. I got one. Yeah. Um. So me, me and Gal, we we have a bit of bit banter. Of yep. We give it to each other constantly. Yeah. Right. And that's as of me coming into first grade from day one. Yep. All, we've always given it to each other, and I've always given it to him back. And um. We're at, a, we're at an away game at Newcastle when it was round 26. And we always do like a couple of team bonding things. We all have a good laugh together yep. and whatever. And uh, we did like a, thank God you're here. Yep. 
which is like, have you seen the show? Thank God you're here. And no, you're, no. You, oh, so you walk in. It's like a, it's like almost like a movie scene set up. So you walk in. Oh yeah. yeah. You've got to just like play out whatever's happening. Yep. So you okay. walk in and you got to adapt. Yep. Okay. Yep. So, um, my, my scene was, <laughs> I'd pick up a girl at the bar. Yep. Right. And it would have been one of the boys. Yep. As a half. Oh, from what I, what I thought. <laughs> so I walked in and we're staying uh, at a hotel and we've walked, and I've walked in and they've got the like a receptionist, an old like an older older lady receptionist <laughs> in there. And all that I've walked in, face has gone bright red. I'm going, oh, yeah, oh you're kidding, like this yeah, is yeah. stitched up. Yeah, and, um, stitch up. She goes, oh hi, um, I'm such and such. And I said, oh hi, I'm I'm Paul Gallon. <laughs> so I've turned, I've flipped it around. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was meant to be me, and I said, yeah. oh, I'm Paul Gallon. Yeah, yeah. And um, and I was just carrying on, and uh, I go. Um, because Gal loves a bourbon. He doesn't drink beer. Like, yeah. He drinks bourbon and cakes. And yeah. I said, do you want bourbon and cake? I said, yeah. <laughs> to pretend to get her a bourbon and cake. Yeah, yeah. Literally like this. Just two yeah. hands. I yeah, bourbon yeah. and cake. And, um, uh, and then she's like, oh, what do you do for work? And I go, don't you own a TV? I'm, I'm bloody all over it. <laughs> like, I'm trying to be real, this, a real arrogant <laughs> prick. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and then I, I go, oh, I'm fucking g train. I picked her up on my shoulders and I squat her like, <laughs> That's what Gal does it at Northies and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. when we go out as a team, yeah. like he always put someone on his shoulders yeah, or squat, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. do something like carry on. Yeah, that that was pretty funny. But yeah. like there'd be times where like we roomed together a fair bit. So as they well. pulled in the receptionist. Yeah, and yeah. I, I've done that. I've done that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Going on, I got right yeah. into it. Yeah, yeah. yeah and he wasn't that. happy about it. Yeah. Oh, really? Nah. <laughs> oh, there's times where I'd be um, rooming with him, and I'd be uh, <clears throat> hid behind the curtain oh yeah and there's yeah. a video of I can show you the video and I set the camera up in the corner of the room <laughs> he's got out of the shower he thought I wasn't there and I've got out <laughs> like this <laughs> he's lost the towel stark naked on the, on the bed like freaking out <laughs> <laughs> like that, that like oh, yeah. we get to that all the time like, like an L. he does oh, things to me too oh, it's... and the, wor- the, the worst thing is though is because like he's such a veteran you don't know how far you can push it yeah whereas with you he can go as far as he wants oh, 100%. Like, so he can just do whatever the fuck he wants yeah. but the thing is with him He'll get you back to us as well. So oh, really? Back so he's end. trying to end the war. Yep. He's trying to go nuclear so the war just ends. He's got to, he's got to win 1-0 up. <laughs> like, <laughs> there's, the no, there's no draws. There's no even, getting even. Yeah. It's always it's him. It's always him winning. Yeah. Um, okay, so... Yeah, what's been... Outside of the debut, what's been the best memory playing footy? On the field where you've been like, this is why I play footy? Um, probably when I scored my first try. Yeah. Um, it was in my second game that I scored that. And... Um, that was probably a, a massive moment. It was down in Canberra. Uh, I remember we did a shift to the right and Luke Lewis broke through. Yep. And I was pushed out the middle and he and he passed back on the inside and, I've, yep. and I scored uh, just next Lewis to the post. So. Oh, he's the, he's the best. He yeah. gave him the try after my jaw too. Yeah, yeah, he's just gave he it He looks after me. Yeah. yeah. Fuck, he's a good, he's a good um, legend. But uh, yeah, so that, that was probably a big moment that sticks out in my mind. And yep. All my family <laughs> made the trip down to Canberra as well. Oh, really? I saw him after the game. That, that was just... Like stoked, like I was yep. stoked the week before I made my debut. Yeah. The next week I scored my try, so it was pretty, yeah, uh, pretty crazy first two weeks. Um, but I think uh, hopefully, uh, and finals football is also a massive moment. Yeah. For me that I've taken away, and hopefully looking forward to this year. Hopefully I get to play with my brother with my brother. Yeah. Blake. That'd be cool. That'd How be, cool would that be? Yeah, a very no. special moment. Um, I that. Oh, I was gonna say. Oh fuck! I forgot what I was gonna say now. Yeah. Um, um, I had a question lined on up and I just like, maybe it must I be the CTE it must be the CTE the brain trauma <laughs> <laughs> I try. Um, who's been the um, hardest player you've played against probably Cam Smith oh really to be honest just um, tricky yeah just tricky just competing all game Billy Slater yep. another one he's pretty hard to get your hands on him he's just yep. so nippy and um, but I think the hardest person to tackle Obviously, everyone says Tao Malolo. I'd have to say Tao Malolo. Oh, really? It's just a joke. Oh. Like, you just don't know what to do. Yeah. It's freaking so low gravity, but also massive. Yeah. Like, I remember in that finals game my first year, yep. going back to the defensive line, I remember seeing him lining up. And I was an A defender, but I felt pretty isolated. A yep. short number. And I was like, Fafina, come, come, <laughs> come help me out. Yeah. And he always has my back, Fifter. Oh, he really? always has my back. Okay, wow. And, um, yeah, I just... Give it everything I got. Yeah, just the, do your best. And yep. Junior Paulo is another one. Oh, just really? Junior Paulo. Yeah. Just, just tough to tackle. He's rolled me He's a couple so times. massive, man. Yeah. Um, I was just going to say, um, Val, Val Holmes going yep. to Gridiron or mm. NFL or attempting to. I was, yep. no, is that a... 
Who's who, the hat you got on? This is baseball, I think. Baseball, I was going to say. I, I didn't know baseball? where it was. I thought it was San Francisco, but I was like, no, nah, that's surely not. I They're red. It's, might be, I don't know. Yeah, it's baseball. Anyway, all right, yeah, baseball. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, him going to the, the NFL. How, how like did he just like let you know like boys and give us a crack, blah blah. blah and, and what was that like for you as a mate? And you know, seeing how much of a superstar he is on and off the field in the sense of like watching him train, how athletic he really is, yeah. everything like that. What was that like as a as a teammate? Yeah, it was hard because the I think it came out in the media before we knew anything about yeah. it. Okay, the message come the following day. Yeah, but even then, it didn't like it, it. It was tough to see him leave, and it was really disappointing. But to be honest, as a mate, like I couldn't be happier for him. Like, yeah. oh, like I, I didn't care too much. Um, well, I obviously cared that he wasn't in our team anymore, but yeah. the fact that he was going over there to chase the NFL, like that, that's massive. Like, that's huge. And yeah. like I support him one hundred percent. And I've caught up with him after and hung out with him. And yeah. I'm all for him. I've got nothing, hold nothing against him. I, yeah. I hope he, hope he kills it. Yeah, how good would that be? And oh, uh, hopefully he gets me a sideline pass or something. <laughs> 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 I remember, I was supporting couple of you flights. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> remember we used to play nineteen. So. <laughs> oh, remember me? <laughs> but um, nah, to, yeah. I remember all those tries I put you over. For, bro. <laughs> I mean, it's not like you're one of the best attacking weapons in the game or yeah. anything like that. Remember all those dummies you threw me? <laughs> when I was yeah. under the sticks. <laughs> um, all right, so yeah, what's the uh, what's ask all the boys this favorite yep. rap song of all time? Favorite rap song? Yep. Oh, got to be Eminem. Oh, sorry, for, for, yeah, I say favorite rapper of all time. So yeah, favorite Eminem. rapper? Yeah, oh, Eminem, Eminem for sure. He's yeah. a gun man. Fuck, he's good. Did Love you listen to his songs. last CD, Kamikaze? Ah, uh, yeah. Was that one song he was having beef with someone? Was that that one? Yeah, it was. Yeah, it's like the whole the whole CD was yeah. on beef. But Killshot is, Kill is Shot, beef yeah. with MG, MGK. But yeah, no, I don't follow it that closely. Oh, really? Yeah. No, see, I love I love hip hop. Yeah. Um, favorite movie of all time? Favorite movie of all time? Um, favorite movie? I love Will Ferrell. Yeah. I like the other. Have you seen the other guys? Yeah, yeah. I love that movie. Yep. Or um, what's the other one? No, I've said the other guys, probably. The other guys? Other guys. Yeah, it's a good for movie. Sure. Is that Gator? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah good, is it? Right. Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> they should make a movie around Gator. Yeah, I know. Like, do you know what I mean? Can you imagine that character? As oh. a Bro, that'd be fucking hilarious. Just pop. <laughs> fucking hell. You're not talking to Gator like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, yeah. Thank you so much for coming on, brother. I appreciate it. Good luck this year. I hope everything you know, goes smoothly from the Sharks for now on in. Um, hopefully you get a shirt sponsor I'm assuming yeah, I'm not sure at the moment but <laughs> okay, no. yeah. we'll get a bloke in a bar deeds. bloke in a bar will come sponsor you for yeah, uh, beautiful. a few carts of beer each week <laughs> <laughs> but yeah thank you so much brother. Nah. I appreciate it and nah. uh, have a good one thanks for having me mate uh, love coming on so Boom. thank you Thanks,